what kind? I knew he's going to wild out and he's going to do something crazy. Everybody wants to know what I would do. I guess we'll never know. Tight, 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 yeah. Uh, blue, yellow, pink. Hey, I know you own the cops in this dirty fucking town. But you're going to be dead before they get here. Come on, man, you Tommy. not at work today or you're working from home you may be wondering what day is it Todd has the answer for us it's Monday it's a she they outfit of the day the American people are fucking dumb bro whoa 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 the middle class is a bunch of robots walking around hypnotized do I know my IQ? Um, no, I know it was tested when I was young because they tried to say I was learning disabled and it turned out it was opposite. I was just really bored. You're having fun here, aren't you? Making yourself at home, getting comfortable? A little too comfortable, I'd say. I don't give a fuck, man. I'm sick of you always thinking you know what's best for me, dog. Oh, we could socialize like adults. God forbid we become friendly. I don't find you that interesting. You will. In the future of stand-up comedy. <laughs> well, what kind of audience do we have here this evening? Anyone on a first date? Just, just, just you or me. <laughs> Good. There's nothing left to say. We're so fucking boring. Let it die, I say. Let there be a new beginning. It's awful. I'm a player in every sense of the word you heard. I'm getting money from these dummies. Flip your chicks off, sir. I'm a player. We'll call for action from everyone with influence on the spread of mis and disinformation on the internet. Governments, regulators, policymakers, technology companies, the media, civil society. Why should we trust you? Why should you not? I don't know. If you don't trust me, you're going to get hit. But if, you know what, even if you don't trust me, it's okay, because that's telling me you don't trust yourself. Stop the hate. Set up strong guardrails. Be accountable for language that causes harm. How is it that you boys think referring to gay people as fags in today's world is acceptable? Because we're not referring to gay people. You can be gay and not be a fag. Yeah, a lot of fags aren't gay. I happen to be gay, boys. Do you think I'm a fag? Do you ride a big loud Harley and go up and down the streets ruining everyone's nice time? No. Then you're not a fag. So what if a guy is gay and rides a Harley? Then he's a gay fag. I mean, is this really this hard? I don't know. This is fucking ridiculous. All right, look, you're driving in your car, okay? And you're waiting to make a left at a traffic signal. The light turns yellow, should be your turn to go, but the traffic coming at you just keeps coming. And even when the light turns red, a guy in a BMW runs the red light so you can't make your left turn. What goes through your mind? Fag. Right! But you're not thinking, oh, he's a homosexual. You're thinking, oh, he's an inconsiderate douchebag like a Harley rider. This, this is making insanely good sense to me. And as part of my report to our common agenda, we are convening all stakeholders around the Code of Conduct for information integrity on digital platforms. And we'll also further strengthen our focus on how mis and disinformation are impacting progress on global issues, including the climate crisis. Look over there. On the back of the couch. What? Oh, 
Isaac, Mary, and Joseph. Woo. There are those who believe the American media moves in lockstep with some kind of agenda. I can only say that if we were that organized, then maybe at our next meeting we could put together a code of conduct for fixing this crisis. But there are no meetings. There are no meetings. There are no meetings. But there are no meetings. There are no meetings. There are no meetings. Very important is the media leaders. I think every fifth participant is a media leader. President CEO of Thomson Reuters. Chairman and Chief Executive of News Corporation. Associate Editor of the Washington Post. Senior Vice President at CNN. The World Economic Forum has been instrumental in this and in actually bringing together representatives of whether it's Google or Facebook, Twitter and others, and members of the International Media Council here at the World Economic Forum. That's why it's been such a strong convening power. Deputy Managing Editor of the New York Times. Business Editor of The Economist. Executive Chairman of Bloomberg. The Editor-in-Chief of The Wall Street Journal. We love to blame the media because they make this happen, they make that happen, and, and you guys forget, we don't print the truth, we print what people tell us. Economics Editor of The Guardian Newspaper in London. The World Editor at BuzzFeed News. Editor of The Financial Times. Director of News for the BBC. To some people watching this, they're going to be saying, well, hang on a second, you guys, you're experts, you're institutional, you're mainstream media, you've got an agenda, you're part of these institutions that I didn't vote for. Editor-in-chief of Foreign Policy magazine. Editor-in-chief of Wired magazine. Editor-in-chief of National Geographic magazine. We're on the board of the World Economic Forum together. We're trustees of the World Economic Forum. We're not here just to make money. We're not just here to manipulate other people or to get our way. We're here to okay. improve the world and to love each other. Managing Director of the Boston Globe Media Partners. Executive Producer at Cal News Asia. Moderator and host coming from CCTV News. Host of a daily political program on CBC. We're seeing a corruption of democracy dominated by plutocratic donors and owners of the media who can manipulate opinion. Senior Editor at NHK Public Television. Head of the Research and Studies Unit at Arab News. Senior editor at Euronews. Editor-in-chief of the Straits Times. What can the media do better in order to create understanding and support for your agenda? But there are no meetings. But there are no meetings. Why are you always trying to hurt me? One day I'm going to hurt you back. I placed three bombs in three American cities. All three are identical. All three are in urban areas, and all three are nuclear bombs. Jesus. I have demands which will be met by you, or these bombs will explode. All three bombs are set to explode on Friday the 21st at noon Pacific time. Jesus, that's only four days from now. People, if there's a 1% chance, the threat is serious. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> You're not a real lawyer. The University of American Samoa, for Christ's sake, an online course? What a joke. I work my ass off to get where I am. And you take these shortcuts and you think suddenly you're my peer? You do what I do because you're funny and you can make people laugh? I committed my life to this. I know you. I know what you were, what you are. People don't change. You're Slippin' Jimmy. And Slippin' Jimmy I can handle just fine, but Slippin' Jimmy with a law degree is like a chimp with a machine gun. <sighs> Long time no see, you sassy sons of bitches. I missed you. Sorry I've been off camera for so long. It's been a few weeks since I've been on camera. Not that any of you care, but to the one or two people that might be like, where have you been? It's none of your business. I've, I've been gone. I'm gonna make a video talking about it later, but that's not this video. The point is- Cause it's Thursday and it's past noon. Thursday is one of my days off. On my off days, I start drinking at noon. You don't get to interrupt that. Point is, the point is, I missed you so damn much, more than you know, in a, like a parasocial, spiritual kind of way. Regardless, uh, I want to just say thank you to everybody who uh, has been supporting my New World Order videos. Last guy who ran off on the pack got choked out by some Givenchy gloves. Um, my off-camera content, my mini documentaries, if you will. So, since I've been off camera, I've really been hitting the rubber. The rubber's been, the rubber hit, hmm, what's the word? 
I've been hitting the paint. Been I've been going hard in the paint in the editing room with these um, New World Order videos. So I just want to say thank you all for supporting that content. When I think about pedophile armies and world government and nuclear war and devaluation and old people starving to death and all this crap, I get pissed. Like if you walk up and slap me in the face, I could be sitting there asleep. I'm going to jump up and beat your ass. It's the same thing. We need to all have the same attitude of this is serious. That's why I'm so damn animated. Um, that is not the future of this channel. So don't get worried. I'm not going anywhere. Oh man, I am so bored. I feel like I have- I just had to take a break for personal reasons. Let's just get into today's video. And today's episode is a brand new special edition. This ain't the news. That's right, we're gonna cover a bunch of news stories, kind of rapid fire, just see what's trending this week and, and, and probably go ahead and give my two cents, my opinions and commentary sprinkled on top of these news stories. So one last time before we begin, thank you so much for being here. It means everything to me. It truly does. And congratulations. I, yeah. I had no idea yeah, no, we, what it took to make a show. Incredible. Yeah. But if you made it this far, go ahead and hit the like button. Just do it. I'm a content creator. I have to say it. I gotta say it. I'm not trying to be douchey or cringe about it, but just please hit, hit the like button. That'd be super dope. Also, I'm demonetized in case I haven't made that explicitly clear over the last three years. If you get the opportunity, you should kill yourself. So if you want to support the content, feel free to go to the Cash App merch store or Patreon. Links are in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of This Ain't The News. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. You understand me? All right. So our first story of the day involves Mike Micropenis. Pen, Mike, Mike Penis, Micropenis Pence. He was the, uh, what was he? The vice, the vice chairman? The vice, he was the vice president. That's right. Yeah. He was the vice president of the United States. But just because Joe Biden was vice president and got elected, totally legally, doesn't mean it happens to everyone. Oh yeah, 81 million votes, fair and square. <laughs> but the point is, it doesn't matter if he were the vice president, that is not enough pull, that's not enough influence to run for president. It doesn't mean just because you were the vice president, you're gonna stand a chance on the presidential stage. Mike Pence is a goddamn establishment shill. He's a rhino, Republican in name only, he's, he's a neocon. Just like the, like everybody, basically. But you never know. But it brings me great, immense, overwhelming joy to receive the news that Mike Pence has officially dropped out of the presidential race. It's not his time. Whatever the fuck that means. I just couldn't sit this one out. But the Bible tells us all I can tell you, sir, is that he's gay. Gay! But there's a time for every purpose under heaven. And traveling across the country over the past six months, I came here to say it's become clear to me, this is not my time. So after much prayer and deliberation... I don't fucking care! It don't matter to Jesus! But you're not fooling me, man. You might fool the fox in the league office, but you don't fool Jesus. It's Bush League psycho stuff. Laughable, man. <laughs> I have decided to suspend my campaign for president effective today. Oh, God. You know, how, geez. That's just terrible. What, what the hell is that, dude? That didn't sound very genuine. No. Oh. Sorry, what was I supposed to do? <gasps> what are you doing? Are you kidding me? Are you screwing with me right now? No. Now, I'm leaving this campaign, but let me promise you, I will never... That was, that was weird. <laughs> anyway, what I was, what I was saying was... Baby, Mike Pence is suspended his... 
presidential campaign. Let me get out of here with this echo. Now we all knew Mikey wasn't gonna hit, but I thought there was gonna be more fight. But it says a whole lot that you as the vice president of America, the former vice president is not even polling over the people that have made the debate stage. You were literally the number two seat of power. And I'm gonna tell you, Mike, I'm gonna tell you where you messed up. So I get that you stood by your guy. You stood and supported Trump. But there was a moment, you had a real moment around January 6th where you 100% could have been the Republican nominee right now. But because you chose to capitulate and to back down from the truth, when we all watched with our eyes MAGA turning against you because you didn't want to be perceived as working with the Democrats, because you did not stand up and do your real constitutional duty, yeah, you certified the election, which you were supposed to do, but you ain't stand on business. You didn't stand on business when the stuff was going down. You lied and you made excuses. And then when you decided that you wanted to run for president, all of a sudden you're tacitly attacking Trump. And then when you see you weren't doing well in the polls, then you wanted to come out more forcefully. But you still lie. I just tell the truth. Does racism exist? Absolutely not. That's got to be racist. There's no way. I'm going to just keep it real. I need my money. I'm trying to do shit the right way. Went to the other side. I know what I'm doing. The game's rigged. You know how hard I worked to get here? It ain't made for people like us, so you know what? I'm rewriting the rules. They brought me a key. And I'll turn it around quick. I built this shit. Me. Brick by brick. And I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk. All right, on to the next topic. If you haven't been made aware, there was a mass shooting in the state of Maine. And the Maine mass shooter was just found of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was found dead. But guess where he was found dead? In a fucking dumpster at a recycling center. Hmm. This is not passing <laughs> the smell test, okay? Something ain't right. Go check it out. Yeah. There's no fucking way the dude hopped into a dumpster at a recycling plant and shot himself in the back of the head. <sighs> Don't think that happened, but hey, who knows? It definitely was not some kind of, you know, deep state CIA, PSYOP, MKUltra, you know, program, radicalization. You know, you, you say the trigger word and they go shoot up a school or whatever. I'm not saying, it's not that. It's definitely not that, okay? <laughs> it's not. But, <laughs> I can't say anything else or I'll, I'll get Alex Jones and I'll, uh, I'll get sued for $2 billion, which I don't have. So, nope, they the people died. Look, people, people die in these shootings. But I'm starting to feel, with every one of these mass shootings, a little bit more that these are false flags. A little bit more that each one of these is a slow progression to taking away our guns. Because they know full well. They fucking know. They can't just take away our, our firearms, our right to self-defense. This is America. It's the Second Amendment. One, two. It's the second for a reason, because it's important. These globalists and these New World Order fucks, no. They can't just come take your guns because it's going to start a revolution, a, a, a war. An actual war. You're going to fuck around and find out. So what they do is... The point is that you are under a misconception. At some level, I, I, I believe we're going to be destroyed, those of us that were given evil, because nothing evil can go forward in the future. And so while the globalists are so busy trying to kill the children... They radicalize individuals to go commit mass murder, and every time we hear about it, it makes people a little bit more agreeable with handing over your guns until they finally get everyone to hand them over willingly, or at least like a majority, like, or if they were to somehow, somehow overturn the Second Amendment with some sort of vote. I don't know how that would work, but the point is, they slowly use their fear-mongering to the point where it's like, 
No more guns. Only the government can have guns. So that way, you're fucked. You're, you're, you are now slaves. You don't have any weapons. You don't have any control. You lose your freedoms. You lose your liberties. You lose your civil rights. You lose everything. You give it all up, willingly. Because the government is going to scare you into believing that they are the only ones who can save you. When they start talking like that, which they already have, you know we're in deep shit. You try to take my guns, you find out what happens real quick. You unlawfully try to take my gun, whew. someone's gonna die. I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyways, there's like a breaking news report video clip. So let's go ahead and watch this news report and kind of see just how sketch the situation is. It just feels sus. This whole thing feels very suspicious. So, uh, yeah, Applejack, thank you for being ready. Hit it. Ed, yeah, so down this roadway, Capitol Avenue is where main recycling is is at, and that is where Robert Card used to work, and that is where Robert Card's body was found at 745 tonight. Police sources telling our sister station WMTW that his body was actually found in a dumpster. Now that opens up so many questions. How did he end up there? Um, and, you know, John brought up a, a really good question earlier. You know, where was he? His car was found about a mile away from the recycling facility at the boat ramp here in Lisbon, where police were searching for days, including diving in the water to find any clues of where he could be. And tonight we are learning that his body was found at this recycling center that's behind me that is being uh, combed through by a heavy police presence to try and determine how Robert Card got there, dying of a self-inflicted gunshot wound, according to police. Ed? So, Jen, give us a sense, if you would, of the timeline that you experienced. I mean, there was a press conference at 5 o'clock this mm -hmm. afternoon, and then, and then we heard tonight that at 7.45 they discovered it. I imagine the chaos in that period of time, in those two hours and 45 minutes, must have been exhilarating almost. So much chaos, that is right, Ed. At 5 p.m., we were told that uh, police have not seen Robert Card for the past two days. Searches are happening everywhere. Heavily armed uh, police, federal agents are all over Lewiston in Lisbon. And then two hours and 45 minutes later, police end up finding his body here on our way from the bar uh, where Card allegedly uh, killed multiple people. We made our way to Lisbon and we saw multiple uh, state troopers, uh, police cars, helicopters in the sky. Something was happening and we needed to figure out what that was. We ended up here and that's when uh, law enforcement sources started confirming that his body was indeed found so, here. It, it was very chaotic. It happened very, very fast. What time was that, Jennifer? Because we're just trying, they did, did not release a lot of information out of that press conference except to say that he is dead mm -hmm. and that the community can mm -hmm feel some sense of relief. But in terms of piecing all of this together, they say that they're going to answer these questions at a press conference tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. But f you were there and all of a sudden you got there to the scene. So his body was found at 745. What time did you see all of that or, or confirmed confirmed? What time did you see all of that police activity? When we saw all the police cars and tr trooper vehicles coming here, it was about um, 9, 940. 940. About 940. It was around that time. And yeah, we were we were making our way down here around um, 830. Right, and then that's, that's right. when we know we just started driving around and, and trying to figure sure. out where they were going. And, and, and around that time is when um, we got word that his body was found. Just, just and you mentioned it during your report, just to fill in again to make sure I heard it correctly. WMTW was saying that he was found in a dumpster on that location inside inside of a dumpster. Now, how he got there, we don't know. You know, there are so many questions. Did he climb in and then do what he did? Um, uh, 
so so many unanswered questions right now, Ed, but uh, an alarming detail of this investigation right, right now. And right. of course, as you can see behind me, police are still trying, still to, trying to piece it all together. Yep. Right, yep. And, yep. and hopefully more information tomorrow at 10, 10 o'clock. Apparently the medical examiner is there on the scene and they have to confirm and do their investigation there. And then, then more details will be released. Hence the word we use, apparent, before we say suicide. Exactly. Apparent suicide. Exactly. It's apparent before we say suicide. Exactly. Apparent suicide. Exactly. <sighs> okay, so now for our next segment, I like to call this a palate cleanser, if you will. This one involves a bear, and everyone knows, well, everyone who's been with the channel for a few years knows how much I love bears. I'm just kidding. Fuck bears. I hate bears. They are no friends of this channel. Mm -mm. Fuck them. Fuck them. But anyways. <laughs> Darth, what's your thing against bears? <laughs> one ate my dog when I was a kid, so let's just leave it at that. Anyways, <laughs> yes, for real, but that's back on track. Uh, we're going to watch this black bear enter what looks like a restaurant kitchen, and a security guard approaches the area that the bear is hiding, and the bear jumps out and throws him, like pushes him. <laughs> Let's just see what less is more. Let's watch the video moments caught on security video and a bear goes after a security guard. So the video shows the bear walking through the kitchen. This is at the St. Regis Resort in Aspen, Colorado. So Colorado Parks and Wildlife say a security guard was investigating reports of the animal when the guard turned a corner. Let's go get okay, watch. So here comes the guard. He's got his walkie talkie out like, uh, hey guys, like, I, I can't find the bear. <laughs> and then watch. The bear comes out of the corner. It's hard to watch, but watch. Okay, here it comes. Wait for it. Wait for it. He takes a swipe <gasps> at him. Oh my God! He goes running and trips. The bear goes the other way. Wow! So the guard called 911. He was treated for scratches. Mm. Officials then tranquilized the bear, removed it from the area, back up into the mountains. Wow! But he was in the same range. That bear, you know, had some class. <laughs> he's got good taste. Yeah, he's got good taste. So for the next story, we're going to need a journey all the way over to Japan. Japanese. Japan. Japan. That's, no, that's racist. That's gotta be racist. In Japan, we're gonna find a white American transgender lesbian, AKA a straight white male. And this straight white male is apparently married to a woman. And this transgender lesbian, the, <laughs> the straight white male, is suing the Japanese government for 2.2 million yen, <laughs> which is like 19,000 US dollars. But, <laughs> but anyway, but they're suing the Japanese government to legally recognize the self-declared gender identity movement and to, I guess, legally accept gay marriage or what... what you know. Only, only an American would be so ignorant and so woe is me to think that going to the other side of the world, a different country, different culture, different laws, are just going to accept you because you're so fucking special. <laughs> the world does not revolve around you. These kinds of people just need to go. I don't know where, put them on an island with no food and no way off the island. So they're gonna have to drink seawater and eat each other to survive, I guess, somehow. But that's where they should go, to that special, special island. You wanna try that shit in Dubai? The penalty is death. You wanna go to Iran, you wanna go to Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, anywhere in the Middle East anywhere in Africa, you try that shit, you're dead. They're gonna kill you. Surely this is all for me. Me? Me, 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 I, I. I'm, I'm so fucking important. I'm so fucking important, right? <clears throat> Fuck you. you. Uh, for our next depressing fucking news story, 
We're going over to Pittsburgh. NHL player for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Adam Johnson, just died live on TV during a game from being sliced across the throat by a fucking skate. The media is calling this an accident. It was an accident. Things happen. Do they? Has this ever happened before in the history of the NHL? I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but I'm going to say probably not. But the media is saying it's an accident. But the internet, you can always rely on the internet to give you the truth. Well, no, you can't. That's a, that is a, that's a, that's a lie. You can never trust the internet. <laughs> it's been a long day. Don't trust the internet. Don't trust me for fuck. Please don't trust me. Um, but the internet has decided that this man is guilty of fucking murder and needs to go to prison. Professional and amateur hockey players coming out and saying this kind of a move doesn't just happen from momentum. This was a deliberate kick with the skate, whether he was trying to hit his throat or hit him in the head with it or something, who knows. Um, but I'm not here to tell you one way or the other. I don't know if this was a murder. I don't know if this was an accident. I don't know if it was intentional, but not in intended to kill him. I, who knows? Who knows? I'll let you decide. Applejack, hit it. Oh, fuck. Hit it. So, yeah, didn't look too pretty, but, you know, maybe, just maybe it's time that the NHL create new regulations um, and for force someone to design a neck protection piece so things like this can't happen in the future and force the players to wear the, the neck protection. I'm sure you can find something lightweight and mobile to protect the neck because this, this is insane. Yeah, the NHL should figure something out. Or maybe people just shouldn't try to Jackie Chan someone's neck with a skate. That's also a possibility. Anyways, for the very last depressing, fuck, I just realized these are all depressing. This is all, this is one, this is a depressing video. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard by now, but Matthew Perry, the star of Friends and 17 again, was found dead from an apparent suicide in his Hollywood home. I want people to understand that they're not alone, that there are other people feeling exactly the way they're feeling, that their behavior is not insane, that they have a disease, and it's not their fault. Now, there's a lot of conspiracies surrounding his death. Oh, let's try Matthew Perry. Yeah, could I be any more of a house? Blech. Who else we got? Hey, Cha-Cha, I got more features than a Nassau relief map of Turkmenistan. Isn't that the voice that caused all those suicides? Murder suicides. The area home where he was found dead is reportedly his own home, and it was an assistant who had initially called 911 reporting cardiac arrest. From what we understand, this was first reported by TMZ, but several outlets, including us, have confirmed it in, in that time. And from what we understand, he'd spent the morning very active, playing pickleball for a few hours, came home, sent his assistant out on an errand, and when the assistant returned a few hours later, found him in a, an apparent dire condition. I don't know if he was dead at that point or suffering some sort of heart attack, but he was found in the jacuzzi What's unclear is whether or not he was just in the jacuzzi when he died or had drowned in the jacuzzi. So there's quite a few questions there. He's my drowning moron. We'll gaze into our future and we'll think about our marriage and days to come. <laughs> Chandler, what is the matter with your face? Wait, this picture is supposed to say Geller and being to be married, not local woman saves drowning moron. <laughs> hey, don't laugh at him. Reports the actor was found dead today at a Los Angeles area home of an apparent drowning in a backyard jacuzzi. The Emmy nominated actor was found dead of an apparent drowning at his L.A. home this afternoon. Matthew Perry has died. 
The Friends star drowned Saturday at his home in Los Angeles, according to multiple reports. Matthew Perry, who played Chandler Bing on the hit show Friends, has drowned. I guess I'll be the one who dies first. However, I'm not going to explain the conspiracies in this video. I've decided that on my second channel, Darth Man, I will make a video dedicated to Tyler Perry. <laughs> Stephen Curry. Steph fucking Tyler Pe Matthew Perry. Like I said, it's been a long day. So if you're interested in more Darth News content, feel free to go over to Darth Man, my second channel, where I will make a Matthew, not Tyler, Perry video. So if you want, look, fuck. Why I'm here in the first place is to sell you meth. I can't find pussy anywhere. Nobody knows anything. I'm married! Why are you leaving me? If I didn't do anything wrong, well, I don't understand that's why you like me! I'm not staying on this farm! Nothing's gonna keep me here! Ah, yes! Please, I'm a star! Oh, yeah, one more thing. One, I forgot to... You guys watch Disney? No? Good, you shouldn't. It looks like the Disney live-action remake of Snow White is probably going to get reshoots. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard. Yellow Flash won't shut up about it. <laughs> but that's fine. But anyway, um, Rachel Zegler caused so much controversy around the new Snow White movie that they have delayed it by an entire year, which can tell me one thing. They're doing... Major reshoots. And if I had to guess, I'm going to guess that they're going to be reshooting the politically correct magical creatures, a.k.a. the seven dwarves, who are not dwarves. They're non-binary giants, but there's one dwarf. But the movie received so much backlash that um, instead of coming out this November, it's, it's coming out. Well, it's been indefinitely put on hold, but they said about a year, which is a, a great thing, a great thing, because I hate, I fucking hate Disney. I hate them. I, I, I mean, I really, I hate Hollywood. I mean, I love Hollywood, but I hate Hollywood, but I hate Disney specifically. So it makes me smile to see them slowly crumble. You know, it's the laws of diminishing returns. Just saying. When all you do is create rehashed garbage of once beloved characters it's like you've you, you've run out of creativity you, you're creatively bankrupt that's what's happened i find rachel zegler ziegler whatever the fuck to be incredibly insufferable i don't like her never have i hope they replace her i think that would be best i think they should go back to the original story where The prince kisses her, you know? <laughs> so controversial, but we don't want to give off rapey vibes, do we? Anyways, that's it. I just want to say it makes me happy that Disney is slowly dying. Lord knows they've had too much power for too long. And honestly, I don't think Deadpool 3 is going to save Disney. The problem with Disney and Marvel movies and Star Wars and their big... The problem with Disney is much more nuanced and intricate. I mean, they could pop out one good movie out of 20. That doesn't make them a successful business. When you're pouring a half a billion dollars into Indiana Jones 5, which is... <sighs> Anyways, I'll see you later. You get any sleep last night? I don't sleep. I just dream.